most popular radio station in the second annual event hosted by the Communications Authority of Kenya. Radio Maisha, as Kenya's favorite radio station, was not the only award for the evening as KTN Home emerged the second runners-up in the popular viewership countrywide. KTN News was also second runners-up in sign language communication while at the same time also emerging first runners-up in agricultural content. Radio Maisha. Radio Maisha. What the game of the line of your own? We are the people's choice. Na ni wananchi milioni nne ambao walipiga kura kutufanya sisi kuwa kituo bora zaidi nchini Kenya. We are humbled and we thank all the listeners. I also want to take this opportunity to thank the, the Radio Maisha team. A lot of hard work. It's been eight years and every each of those eight years we've been, we've been celebrating. But we also know that it's been a journey. We've come from, uh, I don't want to talk where we came from, but I can speak about where we are at and where we want to go. Coincidentally, within the eight years, you're celebrating an endorsement by the listeners. I think that's the biggest thank you can ever receive. Uh, the real winners today are the listeners who have propelled us to where we are, who have selected us as the People's Choice Station. The real winners are the people who are working hard every day. Let's look at politics now. Just where, just where is one of NASA principals, Kalonzo Musioka? Since the handshake between President Uhuru Kenyatta and NASA leader Raila Odinga, Kalonzo seems to have taken a back seat from the political limelight. What is he up to? Our senior political affairs reporter, Chris Thyro, spoke to some of his close political allies and filed the following report. Lakini Kalonzo hako na sisi. Kalonzo atapishwa badai. It will mark the beginning of the breakup of the once vibrant political formation, NASA, after the three principals skipped the January 30th controversial all-thing ceremony. And slightly over two months, the NASA leader Raila Odinga will warm up to a handshake with his newfound political friend, President Uru Kenyatta, a move that has seen Raila's running mate, Kalonzo Musyoka, isolated from the whole equation. And so, where is Kalonzo Musyoka? And what has he been up to? Of course, Kalonzo Musyoka uh, wants to be president. Uh, as far as we are concerned in Waipa, uh, we are working day and night uh, to make that dream succeed. If Kalonzo is not going to be supported by any of his friends who are in NASA, they do so early. So that then Kalonzo prepares himself either to contest on his own, or like I have said, at liberty to join forces with other, other political outfits. Given that there was a pre-election agreement in NASA that ODM party would support Kalonzo Musyoka's presidential bid under the umbrella of NASA coalition, Kalonzo's appointment have already started doubting whether Ray Lodinga will finally say Kalonzo Tosha. But increasingly, uh, my colleagues in ODM have, have said it very clearly that they must have a presidential candidate. Raila himself has not been very clear. And I've stated here that he, he must be himself very clear about this issue. It is for uh, Honorable former Prime Minister Raila Odinga to decide whether he will honor uh, that MOU uh, or not. Uh, we have decided to leave it to his conscience. With doubts of NASA surviving after the new working formula between NASA leader Raila Odinga and President Uru Kenyatta, already Kalonzo has started shopping for fresh alliances that will ensure he gets the presidency come 2022. We'll knock the door of uh, the deputy president. We'll knock the door of uh, the president. We'll knock the door of Akena uh, Musa Weta. Uh, we'll knock doors and we, sh we shall still knock the door of rail and say uh, we want our pound of flesh. The fact of the matter, I don't think President uh, Kalonzo Musyoka will make much headway if he goes on his own. 
it's not going to work uh, and it will not work because whoever he faces is going to be a conglomeration of parties or, or several parties or, or, or Ruto himself in terms of uh, the coalition that is Jubilee itself. Kalonzo Musyoka, who was once a cabinet minister and Kanu secretary general during the Moi era, a vice president to retired President Moi Kibaki during the Grand Coalition government after the disputed 2007 general election and a running mate twice to opposition leader Raila Odinga. His appointment believed that this time round, Raila should back his presidential bid come 2022. The last political function that Kalonzo held was two months ago during the Ukambani Leaders Forum that resolved to start sourcing for funds in a bid to facilitate Kalonzo's campaigns in 2022. Chris Dairo, News. The Principal Secretary for Crops Development, Richard Lesiampe, has tabled before the National Assembly's Public Accounts Committee names of 21 traders who are paid 768.4 million shillings. In a fresh base scandal, the traders had posed as genuine farmers but were smoked out in an internal audit that vetted farmers who supplied maize to the National Cereals and Produce Board depots in North and South Rift region. Consequently, Nandi Hills Member of Parliament Alfred Keteru and his Moiben counterpart Silas Tiren want the Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Mwangi Kiunjuri to resign over the multi-million shilling maize scandal. A senior parliamentary affairs reporter Patrick Amimo with that report. The Principal Secretary for Crops Development, Richard Lesiampe, led a team of top officials from the Ministry of Agriculture and the National Cereals and Produce Board to shed light on a fresh maize scandal. Members of the National Assembly's Public Accounts Committee were eager to know the traders and prominent politicians of the Rift Valley who had been paid 1.9 billion shillings for supplying what is believed to be cheap maize imports to CNCPB's National Strategic Grain Reserve. This is a clear case that should have been taken to court. It's a case where the DCI, whoever it is that does investigations, the DTP, should have moved in, arrested these individuals, taken statements, one afternoon and charged them. An internal audit by the State Department for Crops Development on farmers who had supplied to the NCPB 10,000 bags and above and mass 21 traders who were paid handsomely at the expense of farmers' sweat. From the Eldoret Depot, eight traders were identified. They are Celestine Chepchirchir, who supplied over 226,000 bags or 50 kilograms. Alice Wanjiru Gidaiga delivered 39,800 bags. Paul Kibichi Biagon supplied over 10,000 bags. Stephen Kiprop Maio delivered 109,500 bags. John Tanui Kosge supplied 10,400 bags. Anthony Kimgetich Chebi delivered 8,000 bags. David Kimutai Cherop supplied 8,700 bags. And Paul Kipiego Marus delivered 14,700 bags. Five traders were identified to have supplied maize to the Kisumu depot. Caroline Chepchumba supplied 121,600 bags. Richard Kiprotich Koech delivered 12,900 bags. Rodney Kimutai supplied 15,500 bags. Simon Kiposge Changwonyi supplied 32,000 bags. And Stephen Kipro Mayo delivered 32,000 bags. From Nakuru Depot, nine farmers were disowned by the chief of Rongai, who they had indicated in application for maize patches as their witness. The disowned suppliers are Daniel Ngetich, Evans Amdani, Grace Maguta, Jane Gitao, Enoch Kiboen Limo, Esther Nyambugi Thuku, Veronica Gashunji, and Beatrice Manjai. The 21 traders have already been paid over 768 million shillings and have an outstanding balance of 677.8 million shillings. Should the outstanding balance be paid, the 21 traders will take home a total of 1.5 billion shillings in May supply. I would want to know whether there is a farmer in Kenya of a magnitude of supplying 200,000 bags to NCPB. I cannot be convinced, even by the peers, that the only people who could be culpable for this kind of heinous theft are just the stock guys. Because you are talking about one person being paid 640 million. Did you also consider 
the possibility that actually these persons did not sell enemies for that matter, but were actually paid for selling air, NCPD. It is unacceptable, it is not tenable for any public officer to deny, particularly our farmers, the opportunity to benefit from a government premium. And uh, what we did immediately after that is that uh, all the five managers in charge of those sites have all been suspended. Nandi Hills MP and Moiben MP want action taken over the maize scandal. Because as we speak now, we are losing. I talked about it in 2015, 2014. No one took me serious. They thought I was just opposing the Jubilee government because I was against it. They said I was being sponsored by dark forces. Now the dark forces are the ones who are running the show. The big fish have not been named. And I want Terer, the CEO of National Syrian Produce Board, if he believes that he's a patriotic Kenyan and he loves Kenyans and he loves farmers, he needs to come out and tell us the truth. Many farmers in North Rift are a frustrated lot. They have not been paid for their maize supplies while traders masquerading as farmers were given priority. In 2010, Kenya witnessed another maize scandal where well-connected politicians traders sold the National Strategic Grain Reserves to millers at a profit. Patrick Amimo, KTN News. National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi has faulted the judiciary of uh, its ruling on sections of Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act, terming the decision as an attack on Parliament and must be challenged. In an interview with KTN, the Speaker says there might be need to take the judiciary through the process of Parliament since the August House will not accept to be crippled in its functions by judgments that are misinformed. Duncan Chaimba has details. Parliament is readying itself to appeal a high court ruling delivered by Justice John Mativo, stripping Parliament impunity when conducting its affairs in committees. National Assembly Speaker J.B. Muturi says the judge appears not to have understood that a report processed by a committee is not binding or actionable unless it is adopted by the whole House. When the, when the judge rules that... Uh a report of a committee can be challenged in, in, in court. He is completely jabbing the gun because the report of the committee is amenable to amendments and rejection. So if somebody is going to court to challenge a committee report, which eventually is rejected by the House, so what are they doing in court? Muturi, who is also the chair of Parliamentary Service Commission, says the doctrine of separation of powers must be upheld and respected. To say that you, can, you want to challenge the sittings of the committee is the same as saying that you can, you can challenge, uh, you, can, you, can, you can tell the house not to sit. Because when he says that, uh, because the Article 165 in Bowers, uh, the High Court, to exercise supervisory jurisdiction on any person, body, or authority, or organ, uh, if it is acting in, in, uh, in furtherance to the provisions of the Constitution. Now, is that to say that then uh, we need to be preparing our own paper and taking to the judge to tell us whether we can proceed with this or not? I mean, you can see there's a contradiction. He says world over practice is that if one wants to challenge any decision by parliament, then they must wait until the House makes a decision on the matter. Wait. Exercise restraint. So because our processes are not, uh, are not uh, complete until there's a resolution of the House. And the resolution of the House... Uh, must be is must be when the house is fully correct at least in terms of the uh, article 121 not less than 50 members that's part of the reason actually why even the committee reports cannot be binding because uh, they are not passed by a house hmm? a committee obviously has uh, 20 something 19 23 members so um, it cannot be binding so we think that um, Either there is some, some misunderstanding about uh, what the judiciary's uh, power under 165 is. And as such, the speaker says the ruling was misinformed since parliament works through committees. 
I think they may be need to elect uh, judges on the processes of parliament so that they don't get excited and start issuing unnecessary and uh, futile orders. Because you see what, what is going to happen if that if we, if we, if we now became uh, rogue, you know, no, we, nobody will be admitted into the chamber to come and serve process. In the chamber, we don't admit strangers. Are they saying that then we should be admitting strangers to come and uh, start walking around there looking for uh, looking for <laughs> for a member to serve a process? Parliament says the judiciary must let the legislature do its work and then interpret the laws. Duncan Hemba, KTN News.